Hey, Donnie Rosie here, and we wanted to teach you some tips on composure today. So you can see it's very snowy around here, snow everywhere. We're gonna have fun with that. Might be a challenge with some of the exposure, but hey, just an opportunity to do something creative. With me today, I've got the 35 millimeter on a Canon 6D Mark II. These have been great cameras for me. I shoot a 5D Mark IV too, but not with me today. I also, I have got the wide angle with the 35, and then I've got, you know, more cropped in here with the 100 millimeter macro. We probably won't use the macro too much today, but this is great for portraiture as well. So tag along with this as we learn some tips on composure. Okay, for our first shot here, we're gonna shoot a couple coming out of this building, but what's easy to make a mistake on in this building is we've got a lot of straight lines and we wanna make sure that we don't shoot off to one angle or over to the other and mess up those lines. We wanna kinda of hit this one at least straight on and be recognizing what is happening in the background of this picture. So we're gonna take a couple that are wrong and then a couple that at least we would say would be right and more consistent. So let's see what we can get. Okay, for the first shot here, I've got my couple of subjects over here. They're going to be the main subject. And what I don't want to do is be off center just a little bit. So if I take this picture here like this, then my background lines are going to be off. And, and that makes it tough to edit. In this situation, with all of my lines kind of being straight and a little bit of a peak there, I want to shoot them kind of in the middle of this walkway. So I've got them backlit right now with the sun. And so we'll take a couple fun shots here. I'll get a little closer. Can you guys scoot over just a little bit? See, I'm looking at that peak up there, making sure that everything is kind of in line since we're doing this with the symmetry uh, being considered. So I'm gonna make sure I can expose for their face. All right, look at each other and laugh. Just some fun shots. All right, do that one more time. Okay, if I can guys have you go to the porch and then just kind of walk this way. So when I'm shooting a couple like this, I'll have them just do lots of fun things together and just have and share moments together. And that will allow us just to capture stuff that looks uh, normal and like they're just in their natural element. So if you guys just want to walk slowly, kind of straight this way, just talking to each other. So I'm shooting at 2.8, ISO 100. And have them keep coming this way. All right, good, thank you. The next thing I wanna show you is what if you want to blow out the background a little bit more? You don't want too much of this building in here. And I think we can do that. I'll have you guys move in the shade a little bit more, okay? We've got a fairly dark background. So that should let us pick up the light on their faces and, and really drop this down to 2.8 because I'm shooting at a lens that only has 2.8. All right, look at each other. <laughs> and I've got a little bit of background going on there, but it's, it's definitely blown out. And I don't think it'll be very distracting. It's just a little bit of bokeh. Then I can also move over here if I want to pick up this snow that's in the background. Laugh again a little bit. A little kiss, maybe. A laugh. Look at this. <laughs> All right, now come on out this way just a little bit. We'll try something different now where uh, if you guys can stand right here in the middle of this walkway where the background is way far away. So I'm going to be able to put that really far out of focus. If they back up from that post a little bit, I'll get. Uh, sun on them. Yep, turn a little bit towards the sun, just a little bit. Okay, cool. Now smile at me here. Now I've got a nice dark background and bright subjects. A little too bright, I've overexposed it, so I'm gonna... There, okay. Look at each other and laugh. Little kiss. Fun. <laughs> and that looks pretty good. So I've got a dark background, uh, it's far enough away, I can't see the lines. Uh, and I've got subjects that are that are very well uh, lit as well. I wanna show you another opportunity. If you look out this way, I've got the couple walking to the woods line. 
and then I can get a couple shots. One of them walking parallel to the woods. The difficulty is that they're so close to the woods that they blend in. But what I'm going to have them do is stop about right there. Okay, guys, that's perfect. And I want them to walk towards me. I've got a dark background. It's all symmetrical. It's all laying flat. I'm going to put them in the middle and make them the focus. If they walk straight line right to, to me, and this will be a, a landscape kind of mixed with the subject being, being the couple. I'm exposing for their face right now, and I'm focusing on them, making sure that that's working out. Yep. All right, laugh and just kind of have fun. All right, now have a snowball fight. <laughs> a little closer. I want them just to have fun together and hopefully I'll just be able to capture a natural moment. And that's the photographs, this kind of lifestyle photography that's so fun. Okay, stop. <laughs> and uh, just, just kind of hug and be all cute together. I'm going to take lots of shots. I'm far away. It's hard to tell if I'm in focus, but I've got them coming towards me, background really far away, and hopefully this is going to work out. We'll look on the computer. Okay, keep walking towards me. Take a couple more as they get closer. That's putting the background farther away. I've kept everything nice and straight in the background. Now stop there for a second. I want to show you what I wouldn't do. I wouldn't want to be kind of off center like this. And then I've got the line of the fence running, you know, it's not parallel to me anymore. And I, and I think that's going to be much harder to make it look straight. So that's why I'm trying to be really straight on in this picture. You can compose them in the, the bottom left on a third, in the middle. You can kind of try a lot of different things there. Now Dipper, just a tiny bit. Lovely. It'll be fun to see what that looks like. Now come just a little bit farther. I do notice that I still have their heads above the horizon and I want to see if I can get to the point where when I'm shooting down at them, they're completely surrounded by the snow. They're going to come to the line right there. Okay, stop. And I'm going to get center. Now their heads are not competing as much with the dark wood, wood line, hopefully that's going to uh, really help us focus on our subject, the couple right there. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Think about all the things in your pictures. If they stay right there, I want to show you how it's really easy to get stuff in the background that would be distracting. So let's come this way. If I come around this way, there's a big rock wall in the background. And so I'm thinking, oh, this is a nice picture of them. And I'm taking this picture, but then I haven't really paid attention to the fact that there's this big half snow covered wall in the background. Do I want that in my picture? A photographer is always responsible for everything that is in their shot. And so we want to think through every element, everything you can see and say, do I really want this in my shot? Uh, if you start to do that and be picky about what's in your shot, I think your photography will, will get exponentially better. Most of the great photography, it seems like, has a clear subject and there's not too many crazy things going on in the background. Or if something is going on in the background, it is actually adding to the shot, not distracting from it. So think through that. Every shot that you put up, that you edit, Sometimes if you move just a couple feet, like if I took this picture here, and then if I just move over just a little bit, I can completely get rid of that background and that, that kind of junk, I would say, that was over in that corner. Hopefully that helps. The other thing to look for is places where you can frame your subject. So sometimes you can use tree branches, really almost anything, to kind of wrap around and give some cool effects to your subject. I don't say this is the best example. We're just walking by and we thought this will this will at least show you the idea. So I've got Calliope staying there. I've got these branches here. Sometimes I, I'll even pull them into my shot. 
sometimes you can just kind of get in here where they're naturally just kind of hanging around the subject and so I've kind of got this hole that I'm shooting through and that adds like a fun a fun element. Lots of different examples of this. Sometimes we'll use the side of a vehicle, uh, a, you know, a fence, a hole, just almost anything to kind of frame your subject. So look for creative ways you can frame your subject, but also still be, you know, aware of what's going on. So in the background, I've got that telephone pole that's still kind of obnoxious. It, you know, I'm just noticing that it's in my way. So Clive, if you can look back here. So I've recomposed, I've got rid of, now stare kind of up there at the uh, it's bright yeah. so it's hard for Calliope <laughs> <laughs> right but uh, but I think we got something there let's go a little bit farther and see if we can find one more shot I think sometimes the closer you get to some of this stuff that will be in the way it puts it way out of focus and it's not too distracting but it kind of adds to um, you know having a, a very clear subject. All right, hopefully you have a good shot there. Okay, so I chose this location for one shot because the background is very consistent. We're very parallel to it. The other thing that would be fun to do this with this shot would be, oh, hold on one second. I'll be right back. I've got it in my car. <laughs> okay, you ready for the next shot? So we're trying to take pictures outside. It's super bright. Our subject, Calliope, has a hard time. Is it super bright, Calliope? Yeah. Crazy bright. <laughs> so really we've got this scrim. These things are like 25 bucks on Amazon. Not very expensive. So we're going to put the scrim up. Have her stand. Come this way just a little bit. The bush kind of goes out in different directions. We're even using the leading lines and the curves that kind of come in and positioning our subject so they all kind of come back to her face a little bit. We've got a much more even light on our subject. Kind of lean forward just a little bit. Eyes open as best you can. <laughs> so there you can see it's much more of an even light. It's much easier for our subject uh, to be able to look and not be blinded by the light. So. Yeah, consider grabbing one of these. They can really help out your photography, videography, and they are super cheap. Now, um, Lydia is gonna show us how to fold one of these. I hate you. <laughs> okay, Lydia, how do we fold one of these? I don't know. Is this your favorite? This is my favorite. <laughs> this is right. Oh gosh, is it the two, do you grab the corners? <sighs> it's my not favorite. like we're filming this. Are we filming this? No. No. Every, every time oh I wait, this, we're filming. Fail is this. Wait, is this right? I'm just gonna break it probably. <laughs> Don't buy one. Alright, let me see if I can give it a try. Oh. Oh, this you ever trying to fold one of these? You grab opposite ends, you fold it to you. You can watch that in slow mo. And just like that, you have folded your scrim. <laughs> One day Lydia will learn this. <laughs> All right, I think I see a little opportunity here. If you look down this way, you can see these reeds. They provide a different color and they're all very similar. So I'm gonna have my subject stand. Clive, you can go down and stand right before those rocks there. Last two. Okay, we've taken a few shots, yeah. We have this very consistent background. It's gonna be symmetrical because we're gonna put it enough out of focus. We've got a, a matching color, all these natural elements. There's nothing crazy. Like if we were taking a picture towards the sign, we'd have this red to deal with. It could work, but I don't think it's as natural like with her hair color and her scarf and the gray that she has on. I think this really goes with this background and these uh, little cowtails or cattails or whatever they are in the background. Okay, here I want to show you an example of putting a, the subject on a third as opposed to in the middle. First, I'll show you in the middle and then on either side, and you tell me which one you like best. So, here I put her on the right third, and then we're going to try one right in the middle. Got a little bit of a lens flare, it's kind of fun. And then now I'll put her on the left third. Look right over top. 
right of me right here. Kind of lean forward a little bit. Sometimes if you have a subject lean forward just a little bit, it makes the face and the eyes a little bit more prominent as opposed to being back. That can be a little bit harder. So it's a little bit more flattering sometimes to have the, the subject lean forward. Ready? Yep. All right, here I want to show you shooting at you know, F13 or something like that, where everything is kind of going to be in focus. Probably not my favorite because then our subject kind of gets lost into the background. This is often what happens with cell phone pictures because it's hard to have a low aperture. It's a little bit easier with some of the, the new phones. You can, you can do a lower aperture, but let me just take a few shots and you see what you think. I also think in this situation with putting it right in the middle that I've got a different thing going on on the right than I do on the left. And so it'd be better if I put her on a third than if I do in the middle. But then I want to stop down to like F2.2. And see, here you go, Mom. Look over me, yep. And hopefully you can see the difference between F13, F2.2. I think often that lower aperture is gonna help focus and bring a brightness to her eyes because it's about the only thing in focus and make a more dynamic shot. So here we're looking at leading lines. What are leading lines? They're just kind of what they say. They're, they're leading towards the thing you wanna draw attention to, which is you know your subject in this situation. So we've got Calliope over here and I'm gonna use this fence and the boards to hopefully have the eye drawn towards her as the subject. A lot of different ways you could shoot this, kind of down this way or from the side. The main point here is just look for lines that point towards your subject and help tell that story. If you start to look for them, you'll see them everywhere. At the same time, still be conscious of what's in the background so you have a great leading line and then something completely distracting you in the background as well. Okay, so here we're using the direction of the fence where it's pointing like a triangle almost towards our subject. There again, probably not the most amazing shot, but hopefully it shows you the idea of these things converging, these lines pointing uh, towards our subject. And so we're gonna take a couple. All right, smile. Good. Now come uh, this way for me. I also try to incorporate these trees a little bit. They're pretty neat. So hopefully that helps you. I want you to try and take some pictures and have a very clear subject where you're using the natural elements that are in the scene to help focus on that subject. That when you're taking those pictures, you're making sure that there's things that are, that are not distracting in the background. So look through your pictures and as you take pictures going through the Christmas, compose every element in that photograph and see if you get a more desirable result. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the page soon.